The reality of robots today is very different than what we see in science fiction and in the movies in particular. The problem is, is that robots are really, really stupid, okay? They have very small brains, only a small fraction of 1% of the size of our brains. That's how you really need to think about them. So you have this mechanism, this machine, that looks perhaps like a person, that seems to be able to move perhaps like a person, but the truth is it has hardly any brains at all. The head is empty. With a human one-year-old, you have this dichotomy. You have a very large brain inside of a one-year-old that sort of doesn't know very much yet. And so what you see is tremendous memory. You see tremendous understanding of social cues, of language, things like that. Even though a one-year-old can't speak, they can usually understand what we say. In that way, our robots don't come anywhere close to the intelligence of a one-year-old. Where our robots are similar to a one-year-old is in their competence at locomotion and manipulation. When a one-year-old tries to walk up and down ramps or up and down steps, they often fall. And it turns out that our robots have about the same level of competence right now, going up and down steps and ramps roughly that same size. They fall roughly just as often. The first challenge all the teams face is reliability. They've only had six to nine months to build their robots, to begin to write software for them, to try to make them work. For the teams bringing their own hardware, that's the number one issue. For the teams using the Boston Dynamics hardware, they have to deal with reliability of software, and that's no easy task either. So I think the hardest task that they have is making sure that all the bugs in their systems, hardware bugs, software bugs, won't end up losing them points in the challenge. Even a year from now, robots will not be able to lead mountains in a single bound. Uh, robots will still move around relatively slowly. They will still fall on occasion. They will still need human supervision. Again, uh, perhaps the robots will have brains that are roughly comparable to, I don't know, somewhere between an ant and a mouse, okay? They'll still be really, really dumb compared to human beings. They're still gonna need human beings to tell them which particular tasks to do. They won't be able to figure it out. But we think that for disaster response, where we do have human beings, but they have to work at a distance from the robots to stay out of harm's way, we think that that pairing, that collaborative working relationship can be quite effective. A year from now, we actually want a demonstration that will show some utility for disaster scenarios.